Okay, the wheel woolly. Now, what is a wheel woolly first of all? So a wheel woolly is uh, an accessory that is designed to clean primarily the barrels of your wheels and the arches. Now, the original wheel woolies, which is very important to get out first, they originate from New York, so North America, or the US of A. And the reason I say this is because as, I don't know if you kind of look, but there's a lot of kind of manufacturers and companies um, selling what's called the wheel woolly. However, it usually comes out from one of two, maybe three factories uh, in the Far East. Cheap materials, full of metal everywhere. Uh, the microfiber that they use is poor quality. They break, there's a huge issue of, of durability as um, I'm here in average in annual between six to 12 weeks per brush. Now, six to 12 weeks isn't actually that good. So uh, I say the original with pride more than anything. The, the original Wheel Woolly is a company that have been going for close to or just over a hundred years. Um, and they've of course evolved over time. Um, but now this is obviously the latest and greatest and the wheel wheel itself has been around for, you know, many decades at this point. And of course, when something's the best, something's good, it gets ripped off very easily. So the wheel woolies can come into three, into three different sizes, of course. They do a, a large, which is this, look at that. That is the largest wheel woolly. You've then got the medium wheel woolly, which is somewhere in between, of course, medium. And you've got the small one. So before I get on to the description of why obviously each brush exists, I just want to point out the most important thing. The small wheel woolly usually comes probably at a size like this, avoid anything below. Now, this is kind of like the main staple that everybody has. So we approached New York and we said, look, it's a knuckle duster or a knuckle buster. <laughs> um, basically, you know, you've got a brush this short, you're going to get into the tight, intricate areas because that's what it's designed for. It's super thin. It's like a toothpick. So I said, we don't like this. Can you custom make for us a brush that actually coexists within the same 18 inches of length? that um, or the other brushes kind of live with. So they said, oh, of course. They first said, well, no, have you considered this? Have you considered that? Eventually, after I um, beat them with just pure, you know, stubbornness, you need to do this, you need to do this. They eventually made us um, custom made the 18 inch small. Now, we are the first company in the world to do this. And I believe the only one, they may start rolling it out um, with the original kind of set, you know, the black ones. But we, we were the architects behind this. And this is because when you get, especially, I'm going to stereotype here, when you're getting behind the, the front caliper of the wheel and the bigger performance you have in the car, the bigger the, the brake setups become. When you get there, um, you're going to get your knuckles really close to uh, the wheel face. And usually when it's wet, when it's a little bit cold, a little bit windy, you're having a bad day, uh, obviously you might slip or you might touch the face of the wheel and that's why I call it a knuckle buster because eventually you start to kind of hit your knuckles with it. Whereas with this, you are actually far away and you can start cleaning behind the more intricate areas. Now the interesting fact is a lot of people, whether they email us, call us, they come into the store to speak one of our team, they say, well, which one would you recommend? Well, it's very hard to recommend. I'm going to show you right now. So this is, again, our uh, 911. It's got one of the biggest brake kits in the world. This is, you know, a full carbon ceramic kind of setup from Porsche. And I'm going to show you exactly why um, a jack of all trades is not of all trades. So, for example, we're going to start with the large one. The large one, look, it's not even no matter how hard you try it. Behind the caliper, which is humongous, you've got absolutely no chance. So boom, there's one out the way already. And then you've got the uh, medium. Now the medium just, see, it can go all the way through. It fits okay, you know, there's probably a little bit of abrasion there. But then behind the caliper again, it's not fitting. And this is again where the small one comes in and it goes all the way in, all the way 
behind the calipers, that's not a problem. Now, obviously, if you've got common sense, people say, well, I'm just gonna buy the small one. However, when you've got clearance of your brakes, uh, cleaning it with the smallest wheel woolly is not the best. So basically, it's like doing a toothpick in a bathtub. You're gonna be there forever, you're not hitting everything. So the small one's great. The medium one is of course gonna fit and everything's gonna be all right. And then the big one on the front, for example, I love this into the arches like this and you can give literally the entire front, back arches, whichever arches you're cleaning, the biggest coverage because this holds an immense amount of obviously material, product, it can reach into the kind of the, the biggest spaces available. So for the front wheel, technically you can use all three in all kind of three different areas. Now here comes the interesting part. Again, usually, and again, so far, all the cars have seen 100% of the time, of course, the, uh, the brake setups on the cars are a lot smaller. Now on this one, it's huge still, but a little bit smaller than the front. So again, I'm gonna give you the examples. So the large at this point, look, it fits beautifully. It just fits behind the caliper. So that's again, fantastic. Medium one again, super easy, no problem. And then the small one, as you would have guessed, is very easy. Now, the perfect example is you've got the small one on a wheel that is very wide, very deep, and very, in this case, open. So by you cleaning, again, it's not a problem. You can not clean the wheel with one brush, but you're not gonna get the surface contact area as much as you would probably get with a large brush. Well, in fact, it's not a probably, it's, it's most definitely. If you, look at the, if you look at the difference in thickness, it's huge. And again, the large one will come into the, um, into the arch liner very easily. Now, the beauty of these brushes is you can actually use these across other things. So I have seen people, um, I've done this myself as well, when you open the door, and sometimes getting your detail brush into the, into the hinge part of the door jamb is quite hard. So now any three of these brushes, depending on the car, I can't give you an accurate answer on that one, but depending on the car and what style of door it is, you can come in from this side, you can come from above, you can come from anywhere really. And of course, engine bays. You've seen engine bays. These are invaluable in your engine bay routine. Uh, it gets to places where your eyes can't even see. So that's amazing. And of course, exhaust. On my exhaust, uh, to be really specific, I only use the large one because I've got big ass exhausts. And again, I don't want to kind of waste my time with the smaller ones. So I use uh, a thicker one and it's literally a 15 second job. Okay, so that's the wheel woolies. I hope this video has kind of explained to you a little bit more of the uses, the applications, and obviously why you have a three set pack, individual packs, depending for, again, what application you're using for. Now I'm gonna ask you all uh, one little favor. It's a little bit unorthodox, but I think especially in this sector of the, uh, of the market, I think this favor needs to come. So when you are considering, or you're gonna to upgrade to a brush or any of those things, but when you do want to buy a brand new barrel brush for your fantastic wheels to make your life easier, my favor to you is please support the real. And what I mean by that is there are so many companies that are now taking something unbelievable like a wheel woolly. They are making it for 0.1 cents. They're then selling it to you at a humongous premium you know, hundreds and hundreds, in some cases, thousands of percents margin. And again, you use it, you scratch your wheels or the handle falls off or the head snaps. Um, and you have a hugely bad experience in this. Now, before you go to bed tonight or whenever you go to bed, <laughs> just fall asleep with this head, uh, with this in your head. If, if Wheel Woolies as a company did not exist, there would be nothing to copy, okay? Now I live with that thought of what I've just said. If they did not exist, there would be nothing to copy. You can multiply that to a whole kind of segment of, you know, hardware, liquidware, all that type of stuff. Now, if you are going to innovate the product and you are gonna call this Wheel Woolly 
nothing wrong with it, but when you take a market leading product and you rip it off by Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, and you come to the market with something you know, horrifically inadequate, please support the real. Now, I'm asking you to read between the lines about what I'm saying there. Um, we have such a great partnership with these guys. We're on, you know, we're on call, email, video call. We're trying to develop the brushes now. In fact, just before I go, I'm going to show you. Now, you tell me a brush that can do that. There's no metal content in here whatsoever. You can do it to every single brush and they will not break, okay? And they go back to their normal shape, as you can see, okay? So that's the favor that I ask you. When you're ready to upgrade, support the real companies who are actually spending tens and tens of millions of dollars, pounds, whatever, into their R&D development, who actually care, and then help support the companies who bring in said product, who then further customize this, you know, spend obscene amounts of money on molds and all this type of stuff, and actually try and make your life better worldwide. Um, and that is my favor, guys. That is, I'm gonna probably dive a little bit deeper into that topic at another time. But this one, this topic, if you look at the right websites, is getting knocked off way too easily. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do, you know, in terms of legal kind of uh, ramifications. But what we can all do as a human species is if these unfortunate companies want to do this and give you a bad product, don't give them the pennies to keep making the rip-off versions. Get the real one. This brush is the last brush you will ever buy, whether you buy one, three, ten, doesn't matter. This brush will last you forever. It's American-made, American labor, and you're going to have a very, very good experience with this brush. Apart from that, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. My little favor, hopefully, will go not unheard. And please let me know if you already have these. How do you find them? If you are new to the market, post any questions, queries, you know, specs into the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And as always, I hope this video has showed you a little bit of information to where you can obviously use the correct tool for the correct application. And thank you very much for keep supporting us, guys. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good one.